Welcome to today's show, Fingerprint Fantasia, exploring the marvels of dermatographics. We now invite you on a fascinating journey to the world of dermatographics, where we'll uncover the secrets hidden in the patterns on our fingertips. But first, let's define the term dermatographics, derived from the Greek words derma, meaning skin, and glyph, meaning carving. Dermatographics is the scientific study of the patterns on the skin, particularly on the fingertips, palms, toes, and soles of the feet. These epidermal ridges start forming between the 13th and 21st week that a baby is in the womb, around the same time as the development of the brain and other major organs. Now, let's journey back in time to the known origins of dermatographics. In ancient China, the earliest recorded use of fingerprints for identification dates to the Qin Dynasty, which ruled from 221 to 206 BC. Clay seals with both the author's name and fingerprint were widely used to ensure authenticity. After the Chinese invented paper in 105 AD, signing documents with fingerprints became commonplace. Other Asian nations, such as Japan and India, may have been influenced by the Chinese in adopting the use of fingerprints for identification. In Japan, a law passed in 702 AD implied an understanding of the value of fingerprints, while in India, aristocrats began using palm prints to authenticate important documents. Impressions of human fingers have also been discovered on clay tablets from Babylon, dating as far back as 1792 to 1750 BC, suggesting an early understanding of fingerprints and their usefulness for identification. During the late 19th century, Sir Francis Galton, a British scientist and cousin of Charles Darwin, did extensive research on fingerprints and recognized the possible use of their uniqueness for identification purposes. Galton also developed the classification system that laid the foundation for modern fingerprint analysis. Building on Galton's work, English police officer Edward Henry developed a systematic method for classifying fingerprints. The Henry classification system, which was introduced in the early 20th century, became widely adopted in forensic science. Let's now fast forward to the present day, where advances in electronic fingerprinting technology have replaced the older methods that used ink. These improvements also make it possible for forensic results to be directly submitted to law enforcement databases. Furthermore, dermatographics has evolved beyond its roots in identification and forensic science. It's no longer just about identifying individuals, it's now also about understanding people on a deeper level. The Dermatographics Multiple Intelligence Test, or DMIT, has emerged as a tool to identify inborn talents and behavioral tendencies. The DMIT can be completed in three easy steps, a fingerprint scan, analysis of the fingerprints, and counseling. The test helps in discovering learning styles and provides insights into one's personality and characteristics, and this can assist in planning educational and career paths. In the education sector, the DMIT helps in tailor-making learning programs for students by identifying their possible strengths and weaknesses. In the corporate sector, it aids in pre-employment screening, helping to match individuals with the most suitable job roles and suggesting possible leadership styles. The modern study of the hand through decades of scientific research has come to be recognized as a powerful tool for self-discovery. But while some suggest possible connections between fingerprints and personality, 
It's important to note that robust scientific validation for this connection is lacking. So many experts consider dermatographics to be a pseudoscience. Personalities are extremely complex and are influenced by many factors, including genetics, environment, and individual experience. No single physical characteristic, such as fingerprint patterns, can reliably predict or reveal an individual's personality. Nonetheless, supporters of this emerging field of study claim that some fascinating connections appear to exist between dermatographics and personality traits. So let's examine the topic. Are you curious about discovering potential personality traits hidden in your fingerprints? Join us to capture your own unique prints with three simple household items, a pencil, a piece of paper, and scotch tape. Begin by shading the pencil on a piece of paper and rubbing your finger on it. This creates a fingerprint that can be easily lifted. Apply the scotch tape to the fingerprint and you've successfully completed the fingerprinting process. Let's now categorize fingerprints into three main patterns, loops, walls, and arches. Each pattern is associated with certain personality traits. Loop fingerprints are considered to be a sign of a pleasant demeanor and strong opinions tempered with respect for others. Individuals with loop patterns tend to be easygoing, contented in life and effective partners and employees. Leadership comes naturally to them. Those with walls are said to often exhibit above average intelligence and independence. They may be strong intellectually, especially if a wall is present on the thumb. They often prefer leading to following. However, the potential downsides of this personality type are a lack of flexibility and a tendency to want to control others. Arch fingerprints are common among people with analytical minds, practical, cautious and valuing tradition. Individuals with arch patterns find change challenging. They may be perceived as difficult to get along with due to their steadfast ways. Now, let's not forget the outliers, tented arches and double loops. Tented arches suggest an anxious disposition, adding a layer of complexity. Double loop patterns, while rare, may indicate a nuanced personality with the ability to see both sides of an issue. Next, let's explore another modern application of dermatographics. Fingerprint patterns have uses beyond identifying who we are and explaining our personalities. As genetic imprints of sorts, they can even help to diagnose certain hereditary diseases we may be more susceptible to. Fingerprint patterns can be analyzed scientifically by determining their distribution of loops arches and walls. The total finger reach count, absolute finger reach count, and position of axial triradii or ATD can also be measured. The ATD angle, a measure of the angles between the index finger, thumb, and the axial triradius, adds another possible layer of information. Genetic disorders such as Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, and Kleinfelter syndrome all leave unique fingerprint signatures, so dermatographics can be a powerful technique for detecting these conditions. Moving beyond genetics, dermatographics also plays a role in neurology, where it helps scientists to understand early developmental brain disturbances. Certain fingerprint patterns are associated with Alzheimer's disease, schizophrenia, cerebral palsy, neurofibromatosis, and epilepsy. 
Dermatoglyphics can also be used to identify a possible susceptibility to congenital heart diseases, some of which have their own unique fingerprint patterns. Interestingly, the rheumatic heart disease has different imprints for men and women. Certain fingerprints are also connected with essential hypertension and bronchial asthma. Dermatoglyphics can even be used to detect possible cases of diabetes mellitus, cervical cancer and leprosy. As more and more connections are discovered between our fingerprints and other parts of our bodies and even our personalities, dermatoglyphics is becoming a unique kind of storyteller. And with that, we bring our journey through dermatoglyphics to a close. From ancient civilizations to modern times, we've presented stories about how fingerprints are etched into the fabric of human civilization. As we conclude, let us thank God Almighty for the divine craftsmanship evident in our fingerprints a testament to the wonders of His creation. May the unique patterns etched on your hands serve as perpetual reminders to always strive for personal growth and the upliftment of the world around us. If you choose a path of following religious beliefs, you must first become vegan or you will be a hypocrite. There is no compassion in killing an animal or stealing their secretions. Reverend Pastor Robert Munro, Vegan Thank you, Inquisitive viewers, for joining us during today's show. 